Okay, uh, so le let me introduce uh, the sp first speaker of this workshop, Professor Pandurangan. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Pandurangan, the senior professor at Department of Computer Science, uh, IIT Madras, India, where he is serving since 1982, when before uh, many of us are born. And uh, so I'm not going to tell you how many papers he has published, how many awards he has received, how many positions he had held. Um, he has reached at, uh, at a stage in life uh, when all these are really immaterial. So instead, let's, let's ask how many young minds he has saved in this uh, country or beyond. Okay? How, what are his influences in, in the academic and research landscape in theoretical computer science? Uh, in this country or beyond. In one word, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And uh, he is one of the zeroth generation cryptographer and uh, first generation computer scientist in India. And uh, he has consistently uh, trained and uh, excited the young, young minds, uh, unlocked their passion, and uh, he's still in service. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, on the lighter wing, so if you have ever wondered that uh, how some of the speakers uh, would put you in sleep while others, uh, you cannot simply take your eyes off. So he's going to demonstrate the later with his charismatic uh, talk. It's a great orator. We have been always enjoying his uh, lectures, during our PhD days. And uh, also on a personal note, he's my guru and uh, he's the one who have initiated me to the world of cryptography. Thank you for that. And uh, with that, I will uh, um, uh, uh, leave the stage for you. So he's going to talk on the masterpiece in, in the world of MPC called uh, BGW, um, Benor, Goldwasser, and Wittgarsson, the famous result, one of the famous results that has come out in 1980s on, uh, in, on, in, in, the, in the world of MPC. So with that, let's welcome him. And the stage is yours. And, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, Arpita has shown already an Indian map and then uh, some green dots uh, in that. So what I would like to do is that spend one minute on uh, one of the dots which uh, kind of initiated the research in multi-party computation in India. In IIT Chennai, uh, when I was teaching algorithms course, then they constantly uh, modifying, enhancing and then making it to the tune of the trends, we moved from uh, algorithms to randomized approximation. So I was looking for the killer application for uh, approximation, uh, no, randomized algorithms. I chanced into uh, cryptography application. And to begin with, I was looking at randomized algorithms in uh, number theory primality test at the time AKS was not even discovered. Primal the best algorithm for primality test was still a randomized algorithm. So we were all uh, looking at it and that is when uh, uh, an young man from a civil engineering department walked in and then he wanted certain topics related to this when I gave the assignment on uh, Yaw's uh, uh, millionaire problem. And then another person, he is now working in algorithms and he is interested in and uh, coin tossing through telephone. It all started with some curious reading and then discussion among ourselves. And then the person who has done the coin tossing on telephone is Venkateshan Guruswami. Uh, he is now in algorithms in CMU, a professor, a very well known person, but he continued with algorithm. But the civil engineer has turned himself into a computer scientist. It is Kandan Srinathan. And uh, with his MS work and the PhD work, uh, the multi-party computation research in India has uh, started with a big bang. He got the IBM Best Thesis Award, 5,000 US dollars in an international competition. It was awarded as the best thesis by IBM. And then he has motivated and inspired a lot of uh, uh, people. Uh, Vinod Vaikuntanathan, who is now in MIT, and uh, Arvind, who is a uh, father figure in Bitcoin uh, protocol in uh, Princeton, and so many others. And also Arpita here and uh, Asish, they were all the people who have uh, built the next uh, 
level of the work and then made it far deeper, wider and uh, reachable. It all started with the single-handed effort of uh, Kannan Srinathan that I would like to dedicate this talk uh, with pleasure and honor to Kannan Srinathan. He, was, he may be my student, but the way in which uh, he has uh, built with his uh, acumen and uh, research abilities is really phenomenal. And he has nucleated a lot of research and uh, uh, motivated uh, plenty of them. Therefore, it is once again my pleasure and honor to dedicate this talk to Kannan Srinathan. Right now, he is, uh, is an assistant professor in uh, triple IT in Hyderabad. A very uh, reserved person and uh, he may not be interested in publishing much. Uh, the moment something excites him, he would work on it and once he found out the result, yeah, I, I have solved the problem, I am happy with it kind of a person. It requires a lot of goading and uh, pushing and etc. to make that visible to the world. Uh, a very different kind of a person, it started and then now we see that uh, it is uh, growing by leaps and bounds and I am delighted that the seed that we have sown 20 years back is uh, multiplying at a very rapid rate and then uh, thanks to the effort of Arpita, you can see that international visitors are converging here, trying to build a high impact research in this area and I wish all success for them. Now, this area being, uh, 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 it, it's a bit subtle and then slightly different from uh, the other kind of uh, cryptographic one in which you have at least to begin with certain algorithms and uh, the moment you go to the security, even the traditional ones, you, you can understand RSA as an algorithm very easily. The computation in that in five minutes you can understand what it does and with little bit of number theory. But then to argue for its security properties and other things requires several deep concepts and other things. And uh, computer science community, which was quite used to the functionality and implementation, is not geared to receive the abstract ideas on security and their properties. And on the top of it, multi-party computation has another one, the information theoretic security, which uh, assumes the attacker or the adversary has got infinite computing power. And anything can be done. So beyond computation and beyond the normal kind of an adversary, which is even in a typical algorithm course, the adversary strategy like uh, lower bound sorting and login kind of a thing, optimal algorithm, all of them were discussing about the difficulties and impossibilities of an adversary who has polynomial time abilities. NP completeness is trying to put many things beyond that abilities. However, here the adversary has got infinite computing power and that itself required a different kind of a thinking, understanding and so on. So, uh, the subject had inherent challenges, therefore as a teacher and as a learner, we need to have a, a different mindset and that's the reason why we, uh, the, uh, we took a different approach and then built the uh, efforts. So, it is my uh, pleasure to give you an introduction to this as a curtain raiser uh, talk. So let's uh, make things spicy and uh, let me start with a reasonably morbid example. Okay, let's say there are five schools uh, and uh, each school, okay, there are five schools, S1, S2, S3, S4 and S5. Each school has got certain number of drug addicts, okay. So this one has got, uh, let's say, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and uh, a social study exercise requires you to find out the number of, total number of drug addicts reported in these uh, schools. These are problematic schools and so obviously there is an agency that requires the sum of all these numbers, but nobody would like to part with the numbers. Obviously, which school will say that I have got 35 drug addicts in my school? It's obviously going to uh, ruin its reputation, so nobody would like to part the numbers, but then somehow uh, all of them have to be added, okay? So one thing you can do is that we can have a trusted third party, okay? 
and then uh, give these numbers privately to that and ask him to add the numbers and then distribute the numbers or propagate that uh, number. Okay? But uh, given the current scenario, such a trusted th third party may not exist and uh, that is the reason why uh, they were all wondering, is there a way in which uh, they can talk among themselves and then find this sum? Obviously, they have to be very careful with the fact that their personal number is not leaked to anybody else. Nobody should know their number. But then still they would like to contribute for the effort of finding the sum. So how do I make a value that is available, for example, personally with me for some computation outside, but then uh, nothing about the number that I have should be known to outsiders. I would like to subject the number for computation, but nothing should be known. Is there a way in which I can uh, mask it and pass it on so that others can use it for some computation, but they will not know about it, okay? So this is where one of the really exciting uh, ideas, one-time pad, Vernon's one-time pad, and uh, the perfect secrecy uh, notion defined by Shannon has come in a big way to uh, help us, okay? It's really an amazing idea. One of the uh, landmark ideas in uh, cryptography, random blinder, okay? The random blinder works as follows. I can illustrate that in a very simple way, okay? I have a number between 1 and 100 in my mind, okay? What is that number? It's like these people have the numbers, they, it's a something personal. I'm asking you the question, what is the number that I have between 1 and 100? You'll throw up your hand. I'm completely clueless. What do you mean by, you have some number in your mind, how do I, okay, I'll give you infinite computing power. Can you find that number? No way you can find that number. You can only guess. That's all you can do. Is it 73? Is it 41? Is, that's all you can do. You are completely clueless on it. The current situation of yours is modeled through the uncertainty that you have. It could be 1 or 2 or 3 with probability 1 over 100. So 1, 2 or 100 with probability 1 over 100 each. And this models your current situation of what is known as uncertainty. You are not sure what that number uh, is. Okay. But here is something that I am going to give you. The number x added with a random number r where minus x minus 1 less than or equal to r less than or equal to 100 minus uh, uh, 100 minus x okay i am adding this number it could be one of these integers assume that these are all integers i am giving you x plus r to you and then this x plus r i am giving it as 70 so now i have given something concrete for you right 70 is now visible to you and then can you now say what x is? Is it possible for you to comment on x? Notice that I have added something minus x minus 1 to 100 minus x. Again after adding it could be 1 or 2 or 3. My number could be 40 and r could be 30. My number could be 90 and r could be minus 20. Again. Now you see that it could be 1 or 2 or 3 or 100, you are absolutely clueless. Even if you have infinite computing power, you just can't find the number, okay? This is very interesting possibility. When this kind of an information is not giving any clue, I am now somewhat inclined to pass on 70 kind of a thing. If at all you want to use it for your computation, use it, okay? I don't care because now I am assured that by giving 70, uh, nothing about my number is known to you, so I am somewhat convinced about it. We have to give a formal proof for that, that will come later. So uh, at least at, I can circulate 70 for computation. If at all you want to make a good use of it, make use of it, I don't care, I may say now. That's because of uh, this. So that is exactly is our first cut uh, simple solution in which what S1 can do is, he can add a suitable random number and pass on a1 plus r to s2. So for s2 it is a number which gives no clue whatsoever about a1. He got a kind of a random integer. 
he can add in turn to that and a1 plus a2 plus uh, r and he can pass it on to s3 and then s3 can in turn add and pass on a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus r and pass on that value and then the sum can be passed on to a1 back and by the time the value comes back it has got lot of unknown numbers random numbers added up so he is not going to get any clue whatsoever he can remove r because he knows r s1 knows r and s1 can remove r now a1 plus a2 plus a3 is added up so nobody gets any clue whatsoever about uh, any other numbers but then the sum has been found out so this is called this act of uh, circulating this value among the participants is called the protocol it's a sequence of operations are done by a set of people by communication and computation that is done okay so here we are assuming that all the participants are honest and they are going to follow the protocol sincerely so if they follow the protocol sincerely as prescribed and if they pass it on sincerely only in that way it is prescribed by the protocol the protocol says hey you should add a2 to whatever you are getting it to and pass it on to s3 that's all is the prescription you should follow religiously that no other deviation when that happens then naturally everything is fine nobody would have any clue about a1 or a2 or others will not know about the value these values remain what is known as private right others are getting no clue about the values of uh, a1 similarly s1 to s3 s4 s5 have no clue on a2 it is known only to him and it remains safe and intact it's a beautiful uh, approach where the one time padding uh, offers such a perfect secrecy that uh, uh, it blinds in such a nice way that uh, you can let it go and probably use for computation of course the computation done here is very very simple one it's a linear one and i just added it and then this for this task this kind of a simple blinding is good enough and then you got the values it's a, like a magic so everybody's value has been added up but nobody knows what those individual no others would know what the value of others is it's fine but then the problem is again the malicious act of the participants okay probably this these two schools have a vested interest in hitting the popularity of this one so that they get the better student and if they collude the following thing can happen okay so what he can say is i have a1 plus r okay he has added s a2 and then he has passed it on to this one give this value back to him okay so he has a1 he has r he received a1 plus a2 plus r so a1 plus a2 plus r when he comes he has a1 and r minus a1 minus r a2 can be discovered by him and he can in turn pass on that a2 also thank you very much for giving this value here is a2 back to you and these two people now know a2 okay that is because they have deviated from the protocol they have come together they have put the values and did extra computation off record this is not a part of the protocol if they were honest nothing will happen but then there could be a collusion okay so that is also a part of the real world normally you have elements which you deviate from the prescribed protocol and they are all called adversaries they may perform attacks and uh, so on so you have now uh, when my a plus r um, my random blinding and circulating the value is a very good solution as long as everybody is honest as long as everyone follows the protocol and then they do nothing else other than what is uh, done in the protocol but we need to gear ourselves up for something uh, better than that that's because the world is not as clean as our protocol would like it to be okay so there could be a kind of a collusion that is possible and we need to do now in case of collusion obviously i would not now like to let this one and he may not even would like to participate now he would know that this is a weakness of this right so is there a mechanism in which i would still let 
some kind of a, I will do some processing with my value and then let you use it for computation and calculation. Okay, that is the first question. And then there are several other things comes into picture and that defines the what is known as the model. How do they communicate? Okay, what are all the communication uh, features and then the security features available? What do you mean by an attack? What are all the things they do? So, depending on the attack model and depending on the network that you have, depending on the computation powers that are with one, variety of models emerge and then that define the so called multi party uh, computation. So, the multi party computation problem is in general if you have n parties, S12, uh, we will call this as P12 Pn. P1, etc., Pn, and they have a private value V1, etc., Vn, and we would like to compute a function, a multi valued function f of V1, etc., Vn. Okay. This can be a multi valued function or a single valued function. Okay. Uh, Let us say some V is to be, this is to be evaluated. All the people are interested in finding out the value. You can generalize it and then it can be a vector v1 dash, v2 dash, etc., vn dash. Okay. So, and finally, p1 might want to have v1, p2, v1 dash, v2 dash, etc., vn dash. This is what they would like to obtain in the end of the exercise, but nobody would like to part with their values. And not only that, nobody would like their value to be known to others, nobody else should know. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you have uh, listened a little carefully what Arpita has introduced in her slide, uh, <clears throat> uh, depend, uh, if there is some information that can be obtained from the output that obviously cannot be prevented, but other than that no other information. We will come to that point in a minute. <clears throat> Uh, so, we have the following. So, the question is what kind of functions you can compute, right? Our first co computer scientist, what can be computed and what cannot be computed, if certain thing can be computed, how well it can be computed and then what are the constraints in which certain things could be computed, all of them would be studied. So, this is the kind of a function we are going to see. Uh, <coughs> we are now going to take a very simple multi valued function as we understand through our algebraic uh, systems like adding n numbers and maybe squaring and adding etc whatever. So, we will assume that a simple finite field and we assume the finite field the operations of uh, plus and uh, star okay, and assume that this is an uh, function which is uh, an algebraic function which is to be evaluated in a finite field. You can assume them to be the integer modulo a large prime number defining a finite field operation and uh, it is easy to imagine one such uh, nature of the function and we are going to imagine such functions to be evaluated. Okay. It turns out that the classical and then the, the, the landmark result, the BGW result says that uh, under certain uh, circumstances, it is possible to evaluate any function uh, which can be rep uh, which consists of the operations. The intuitive model for that is a circuit based evaluation, which is again quite familiar to all of you. All right. We are going to use an algebraic circuit C, which is representing uh, F. So, it has got uh, addition gate and multiplication gate. Okay. So, if you want to have x1 plus x2 plus x2 uh, x3 to be evaluated, I can um, I can give x1 and x2 okay, to the uh, addition gate and then I this is x1, this is x2 and I can pass x2 and x3 to the multiplication gate and then I can pass these two to the at another addition gate and then you get the result. Okay. So, you have a very simple circuit representation for our function 
it's an arbitrary algebraic function which is in uh, done in a finite field and which can be represented by a circuit and I assume that such a circuit specification is available and uh, what we mean by function evaluation is uh, going through the process of uh, evaluating gate by gate. Okay. So, much like I have demonstrated you have the inputs and then there is a circuit and then you do the circuit evaluation and then get the output. As drawn I have given for one output you can extend it for the uh, multiple outputs, okay. multiple inputs and multiple outputs, uh, uh, algebraic circuit you envision and then the computation proceeds gate by gate uh, much by uh, much like your uh, digital circuit logic and then uh, the Boolean uh, circuits and so on. So, uh, a simple way to imagine our function evaluation is going gate by gate. Okay. So, this is what is to be uh, achieved. Okay. So, what is that uh, we can do against collusion? Now, we need to first model the collusion. The first and simple model is among the n, let us assume that there is a fixed number of people who may uh, collude and this is called a threshold model. In threshold model, we have a number t which is uh, less than n and uh, t parties may collude among themselves and uh, put the information that they have acquired during the protocol and then they may uh, try to uh, obtain the information which they are not really entitled to for. Okay. So, this is called a threshold model. In non-threshold model, you specify who are all uh, the potential colluders, okay? who, who can all come together and then uh, uh, attack the system and then breach the privacy property and so on. So, uh, for the time being, we will assume a very simple model where a fixed number of, uh, and this number is known. Okay? Uh, everybody knows that they are in a system in which there could be potentially up to t bad elements, but they may not know who is bad and who is good, that nobody knows, at least the good one will not know. Okay. And uh, so, the knowledge of who is bad is not known to the honest uh, people. But then we are going to, we are now simply studying the attack by the collusion, so we are going to make another assumption where. Uh, all the bad elements are the parties which are dishonest, okay? they collude with each other, they exchange and they come together, they gang up and we need an abstraction to represent that. We call that as an adversary and so adversary we imagine as masterminding the whole strategy of uh, stealing the information with the help of these uh, uh, people. Okay? So, adversary is just an abstract entity which is uh, modeling the joint effect of the dishonest uh, parties. There are t dishonest parties among n dishonest parties. Is there a way in which I can part with uh, the numbers and then spread it across and make the number available to all people so that uh, up to t people even if they collude, they will get no clue whatsoever about my number. Okay? The random padding even if two guys come together, they can knock that scheme. So, is there a way in which I could do that is the question and that was answered uh, by uh, Shamir and Shamir's secret sharing. There are a couple of other secret sharing uh, scheme as well, but we are going to use the Shamir's uh, secret sharing scheme. This beautifully masks the number in a nice way by splitting as shares. So, Shamir's uh, secret sharing idea is very simple, but then this idea's algebraic properties and probabilistic properties are stunning. Because we are going to go ground up, I am going to elaborate on the algebraic properties and probabilities I will compute explicitly through combinatorial method, through direct enumeration so that you understand what actually going on, what is this mysterious things that are going on and then helping us to solve uh, the problem. Okay? So, we are going to make some more assumptions on the setup and other things soon, but before going to that, here is one algebraic tool that is available for me to simply put some information about the private data that I have, okay? that is Samir secret sharing scheme. So, this is done as follows. 
Okay. Suppose S is the value that you would like to keep private. Every party has a private value. Uh, okay. Let us assume that S is the construct the following polynomial S plus uh, let us say uh, uh, A1x plus uh, A2x square uh, plus At x power t. Okay. All this multiplication and addition are happening in the finite field. Okay. There are two operations plus and uh, uh, star uh, because it is field they have inverses etc. So, consider uh, this particular uh, polynomial and it is well known that if I have certain values evaluate let, let us say this is the polynomial p of x. Okay. Now, if I have only 2 or 3 values let us assume that t is 100 if I give you p of 1 equal to alpha 1 p of 2 equal to alpha 2 if I give just only 2 values and assuming t is 100 okay, still you will not be able to construct this polynomial. Notice that p of 0 is yes. So, if somebody has to discover this they have to build this uh, polynomial and then substitute the value 0 to obtain this value s. Yes. Now, what the party is going to do is a random polynomial with the coefficient a1 to a t chosen randomly is constructed and then the party is going to give let us say p of 1, p of 2 and some certain values it will give. Okay. How many values uh, it can make available? So, this is where the concept of the share and other thing comes into picture. So, we begin with the following. We are going to assume that system wide some fixed values alpha 1, alpha 2, etc., alpha n, there are n values. We assume that cardinality of f, the finite field is way greater than n. So, you reserve some n numbers. For example, if they are integers, you can imagine them to be integers 1 to n, very simple to uh, visualize. Okay. And if you imagine the polynomial as with integer coefficient and so on, just evaluate through integer arithmetic, then you will get a value of the polynomial. Okay. So, this n or system wide, everybody knows it is a common knowledge and it is a protocol for the entire protocol and the use, these fixed constants are going to be used. Notice that there are n parties, therefore, I am identifying n fixed values. Okay. These are all the field elements, they belong to the field because they are going to be used as a points at which all computations, all polynomials will be evaluated. So, I have a t degree polynomial p of x equal to s plus a 1 x plus a 2 x square and uh, plus a t x power t. Okay. I have p of alpha 1 computed, p of alpha 2 computed and so on, p of alpha n I have computed. So, this is the party p 1 let us say is doing this job. p of alpha n is a value, it is a field element, p of alpha 2 is a value and p of alpha. Now, what p 1 is going to do is, is going to distribute p of alpha 2, it can give to p 2 and p of alpha, it can keep that with himself and uh, p of alpha 3 to p 3 and uh, so in this way these values can be. So, instead of circulating the personal value plus a random blinder, the personal value is used to construct a polynomial. The polynomial is evaluated at n different points and one value is given to each party. That is why this is called the shares. I at the share means the polynomial evaluated at alpha i and the ith share goes to the ith party. Okay. This is a very different way in which I am making my value available for computation. Okay. I am not giving my value directly, but is my value safe? Okay. So, we are assuming that there are t parties which are going to, uh, they may collaborate, uh, they may uh, collude and then they can do anything with the value that they have received. Okay. So, if the t part is they have got let us say um, p of uh, alpha i 1, p of alpha i 2 and p of alpha i t, these are the current parties i 1, i 2, 
IT or all the corrupt parties and they have received the value and they are let's say coming together. If they come together, is it possible for them to construct the polynomial? Because if they come together and construct the polynomial, after constructing the polynomial, they can substitute 0 and then they can obtain that value. If they are not able to construct a polynomial, it is a random polynomial value evaluated at 0 for which nobody will have a clue whatsoever which we have to prove. We are going to use probability theory to prove that we will do that. Okay? So, all, I, I will first tell you everything informally then I am going to use rigorously the formal definition on simulation paradigm, the views and the probability derivations of all the co computation I will explain. First, I will appeal to your intuition that can t people come together and then find out the value. Earlier, we have seen a situation where two people can come together and uh, find out somebody's value. Right? And here, P1 has done this job. Is it safe? The answer is it is safe, which we will formally prove a uh, little later. But now, the following is also possible. If there are t plus 1 parties, and if they put themselves together, then it is uh, possible to construct this uh, polynomial. Okay? This is the simple uh, uh, basic properties of the polynomial that there is only one polynomial of degree t that is passing through t plus 1 points. There exists only one polynomial of degree t passing through t plus 1 points. Okay? And there is only one polynomial of degree t passing through that point and uh, that polynomial can also be found out. Okay? It is possible to construct that uh, polynomial. Constructively, efficient uh, solution is available. So, if I have t plus 1 values, I can find the polynomial. Once I can find the polynomial, I can substitute value 0 and then discover that uh, private value that is hidden in that polynomial. Otherwise, it is not possible and you are not going to get any clue. Much like x plus r alone did not give you any clue. Why it did not give you any clue? That x plus r is 70 means x could be again 1 or 2 or 3 or so with only t values when you try to do a computation, you are not going to get any clue about the s that is hidden. s could be any of the um, uh, field element. right? So, given these values, you are not going to get any clue on s because you will be completely puzzled s could be any of the field element. But the moment you have t plus 1, s can be uh, nailed. But that is okay. That S can be nailed when you have T plus 1 shares is perfectly all right for me. I am now more concerned at this point with uh, I am making certain things available that is not giving any clue whatsoever. So, we need to prove this first that when you have only T values, still the probability uh, it could be anything. So, probability is 1 by cardinality of F. Okay? It is a finite field. So, finite probability. Uh, with this, that is probability that uh, I have S yes over here, a, a particular constant here is 1 over F given these values. Right? We will make that statement and then give the proof. So, that will tell you that even if T people come together, bad elements and then whatever the computation do and whatever the computation they power they may have, they can have infinite computing power, it does not matter. Still, they are not going to get this because this is a probabilistic in nature. Like 70, even if you have infinite computing power, did not give any clue to find my x. Same way, these uh, t points are not going to give any clue, even if all the t people have infinite uh, computing power to get s. Okay? So, this is called sharing of value. Once, I am assured that I know that in my system not more than t bad elements are there. So, I will use a t degree polynomial and then generate the share and then give it to the uh, system 
all right it's not a problem for me to simply because even if t people collude they are not going to get any clue on my s therefore it doesn't matter i would be very happy rest of them are honest rest of the n minus t people are not going to deviate from the protocol they are not going to do anything other than what is done in the protocol remember that but only these t people can deviate from the protocol in the sense they will do some extra computation okay the type of uh, adversary or the bad elements that we have assumed is known as passive okay they are not doing arbitrary computation and deviating from the protocol in the execution they execute the protocol as it is except that with the information that they collect they may do some extra computation to find out whether there is any secret possible and so on okay so you have variety of uh, 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 passive uh, active adaptive variety of adversaries uh, are there and what we are considering is uh, passive we are also going to assume that at the beginning of the protocol all the bad elements have been identified and uh, they have ganged up and uh, they know each other among themselves which again in our abstract model there is an adversary who has identified all the bad parties and then it is going to coordinate their communication computation and uh, everything and then with the information that it received it may do lot of extra things to break the system okay here breaking the system simply means knowing the uh, values private values of the honest players okay it's only one more small extension we need to worry about we will talk about it when we <clears throat> so given uh, this here is one method of first adding two numbers with uh, two parties okay so you have p1 p2 etc pn p1 has a and p2 has b okay we will also take uh, uh, another party let's say p3 uh, c okay <clears throat> i am also going to distinguish the scenario where the number of parties is uh, more than 2 because when you have only two parties the subtleties and the challenges are Uh, completely different and the techniques of handling that is also different so i am going to assume that uh, the number of parties n is uh, greater than or equal to 3 <coughs> okay <coughs> so let us assume that uh, these values uh, uh, abc are to be added there are n parties but uh, uh, these three values are to be added so the following can be done okay Uh, p1 can uh, send all the shares p2 can send all the shares and p3 also can send the shares to the entire system okay it's not a problem at all now let's say even a simpler situation when i have two values <coughs> we are going to extend this for adding n numbers that's the problem that we started with our example is to add n private values you will see how this uh, uh, can be done this is a very interesting property which is going to be used uh, in our so p1 gives the shares of a we denote the shares of a particular value given to i like this so p1 chooses a random polynomial p1 and p1 will be like this p1 of x equal to a plus these are all the random values okay Uh, a plus let's say a one x plus a t x power t and uh, p two x. This is another random polynomial. This is b plus b one x plus b t x power t. So p two has identified a polynomial and uh, p one has. A, these are random polynomial and it gives all the values to everyone. P one of x. Uh, so the shares are defined as follows. Okay. for any polynomial p you evaluate at alpha 1 and give to p1 alpha 2 and give to p2 and so on so this polynomial will be evaluated at these points this is system wide constant protocol for all protocols this is common so alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n so p1 generates the share so what do you mean by generating the share evaluating the polynomial at this point and giving this one to others so share of a 1 share of a 2 share of a 3 share of a n is given by a so p1 evaluates this so it is p1's personal polynomial 
and it evaluates at alpha 1 to alpha n and gives one value to all. Okay. Again, uh, P2 gives, again another polynomial is chosen, share of B is uh, distributed Okay, and uh, the share of B is to be distributed. Okay, now A plus B is to be calculated. In in instead of calculating A plus B, the following is going to be done. The shares are going to be manipulated, and we are going to arrive at shares of A plus B. From the shares of A and shares of B, we are going to arrive at shares of A plus B so that I have an assurance that A plus B, the knowledge of A plus B also is not going to be available for those T characters. Okay? Because what we are going to do is simply add and locally, that is no communication, nothing internally each one they have got the two values both of them both values are going to be added so this will add the share values and in general a i and b i will be added so people now have each of them have got a value is it possible for the bad elements to gang up and find out a plus b it is simply not possible for them to find a plus b at all because these are all shared using a t degree polynomial. Okay. So, even when they have the values are added and even if they put gang up them and then put those values together, the values that are available to them are if there is a big polynomial p of x which is equal to p1 of x plus p2 of x, you can see that p of alpha 1 is p1 of alpha 1 plus p2 of alpha 1. Similarly, p of alpha 2 will be this. Therefore, what all they have is indeed the polynomial evaluated at the same points alpha 1 to alpha n with respect to the polynomial p which is sum of p1 and p2. That is okay, but this is a t degree polynomial. <coughs> This is a t degree polynomial evaluated only at t points are available for them. Therefore, they are not going to have any clue whatsoever. Therefore, you now you see that a and b are added okay. system wide some information about a plus b is available, but then they will not be in a position to uh, at least the bad elements are not in a position to uh, find what that value is. Another interesting thing that we can do is therefore, this can be now extended in the following way. What we can do now we can solve our problem the morbid problem that we started with in the following way very simple we have v1, v2, v3, etc., vn. Each processor has got it will choose a random polynomial of degree t and then throw its share one each to all the participants. So, that way all of them will have a lot of shares return, uh, sent by others, it is fine, but then T people by ganging up will not be able to find it. Okay? Therefore, the sum what we have is what every party has is the shares of V1 to Vn and they have finally with them the shares of V1 plus V2 plus Vn which if you call it as V shares of V are available shares of V are with them each one has got one share of V they had share of each one has got a share of V1 V2 etc by simply adding them they have shares of V the shares of V is with respect to that mega polynomial P of X which is equal to P1X plus P2X plus PNX that is because p of x p of alpha is this one which are nothing but the uh, individual shares okay so all of them have got the shares of v it's a very good thing but none of them the bad elements cannot simply gang up and then construct the sum so by colluding 
it is not possible to get the sum. But then how will the sum be found out? Well, all the shares can now be made public. Only shares are made public. Therefore, they are able to now get the final sum by constructing the big polynomial P, substitute the value 0 and then they will be able to get 0. Uh, they will be able to get the sum. But now, this revealing of this final value still is not going to help them in identifying the individual values. Okay? This requires rigorous proof which we are going to do. Okay? This requires an understanding of what is known as simulation paradigm, one of the award winning, Turing award winning ideas in uh, cryptography. All right? So, we will go to that little later. We need some more uh, thing to be uh, done. So, first of all, shares of uh, V is what is available with the individuals. I have to still discuss about the communication network and the real model for adversary and so on. And uh, even before that, I am going to give you the algebraic properties of the secret sharing scheme. This is Shamir's secret scan scheme and the shares have got excellent properties. These are all among the beautiful properties of the shares which we are going to use in our formal proofs. So, the first property is that the shares can be added and when you get, do that, you are getting the shares of the sum. Okay? And uh, given that only one share is available with uh, each uh, person, the bad elements by ganging up can pull together at most T shares. With at most T shares, they will not be able to do anything by themselves. Okay, that is the situation. Okay. <clears throat> Similarly, we can do continuing with this uh, addition. <clears throat> All right, we are going to do the following. Now, coming back to the algebraic uh, circuit uh, that we have, we are going to do the evaluation circuit by, I mean, uh, gate by gate. So, our goal is the following, what every party is going to make available to the system is only the shares, because all party is convinced that by choosing a random polynomial locally, evaluating at alpha and alpha n, giving one to each is very safe. Since they have that safety guarantee, that is all they will give. Now, protocol should start doing the computation with this and finally, the shares of the function value f of uh, v1 to vn. Okay? If you call that as let us say the grand value is v, shares of v must be obtained, shares of v. So, given shares of v1 to vn, how do we obtain shares of v and this is not simply a mindless uh, computation in which all values are simply put together and other thing. It has to be done in such a way that the privacy is uh, maintained. At no point of, at no intermediate point of time, somebody should be able to calculate the polynomial, secret polynomial or private polynomial and discover the private value. It should not happen. So, mindless way of putting simply these shares to compute is not going to work. It has to be carefully orchestrated. So, that is why we are going to go gate by gate and then keep ensuring privacy at every stage. For example, when I add and then let all the process, uh, let all the uh, parties simply add simultaneously in a synchronous fashion when I do, okay. again whether the system is synchronous or asynchronous is a major issue, challenges in asynchronous systems are way harder than the one in. Now, all parties are going to evaluate that circuit that is the function is going to be computed gate by gate in a lock stock and barrel manner. So, it will go in a synchronous way. So, all of them will add the same uh, values that is the same inputs are going to be uh, added up and the circuit evaluation would proceed in a synchronous way at every party's end. So, finally, the parties will have the shares of V. So, shares of V1 to Vn are available and shares of V is going to be generated. What we have shown is, if a addition gate is to be used, 
what it can do right what it can do is simply add the shares and when you add the shares in the output what you have is the share of the added value so whatever is the uh, so we have seen a gate so you, we have a gate x1 and x2 are input and then in the circuit it has produced uh, because it is produced it has x1 plus x2 in the algebraic circuit x1 and x2 can be added and you can get x1 plus x2 but what we are going to do here is the shares of x1 is available shares of x2 is available so what ith party will do is that it has the ith share of x1 it has got the ith share of x2 it will add those two and then it will produce only the ith share of x1 plus x2 that is all its responsibility and that is all it has so it is supposed to do it is not deviating from the protocol okay protocol is executed as such because it is a static adversary all the bad elements will follow the protocol therefore if shares of x1 plus uh, uh, shares of x1 and x2 to be added if that is the instruction in the protocol then everybody locally will do the following they have some share of x1 ith person has got share of ith share of x1 ith person has got the ith share of x2 they will be added when they add what they produce they are producing the share of x1 plus x2 so everybody is producing so this is what happens if ith share of uh, a is added with the ith share of b you are going to get ith share of a plus b but you must remember that this is with respect to a different polynomial if this is with respect to polynomial p and this is with respect to polynomial uh, uh, p1 and this is with respect to polynomial p2 then this will be with respect to the polynomial p1 plus p2 that you should remember okay it is the ith share with respect to a polynomial of degree t but then it is a different polynomial that does not matter it is a t degree polynomial okay so this is how the shares are going to be manipulated there is yet another simple computation which you can do from the Shamir's uh, property that is multiplying by constant this is addition and multiplying by a constant can also be done very easily that is because if I have share of ai if I multiply that I am getting the share of c a i at the share of i so the i at the processor it can take the share of a and if it multiplies by c it is getting another value what is it it is i at the share of c a this again with respect to a polynomial a p if this is with respect to polynomial sorry not c p so if this is with respect to polynomial p uh, this will be with respect to the polynomial cp so we have a constant multiplication and addition is possible right that means now you can very easily extend this to a scenario where all of them are generating the shares of the linear combination okay this is the interesting part let us assume that v equal to so p1 p2 again we make the following as p1 p2 pn they have the local value v1 v2 etc vn okay this is the global value and suppose they are interested in finding out the value v which is equal to a1 v1 plus a2 v2 etc plus a n v n which is a generalization of adding all the numbers it's a linear combination so a1 a2 are all constants this is a goal this is a part of the specification of the circuit therefore the circuit will have a multiplying gate that will take the constant and the input and it will produce the result and those results will be added through the addition gate and so on so you can easily visualize a circuit which is evaluating this and obtaining the value so there is a circuit which is uh, taking uh, v1 to vn and also a1 to an as input and producing v this algebraic circuit is available and this circuit is going to be evaluated gate by gate okay in a synchronous uh, way and then what is that they are going to do they first begin v1 is going to send generate the shares with respect to polynomial p1 
with respect to polynomial p2 with respect to polynomial pn okay so this p1 p2 pn are the random polynomials which are hiding v1 how it can hide it can hide in the constant but there will be situation where it can be hidden in the most significant uh, part or the coefficient of x right now we are going to look into the situation where pi okay uh, <clears throat> looks like uh, uh, the pi has a constant vi then uh, a uh, no i am using a1 uh, here therefore uh, c uh, c i1 x plus c i2 x square plus c i t x power t. So, this is the ith polynomial. P i is this you, using this polynomial processor P i would generate the shares of V i. When it share, generates the shares of V i, it will distribute one per party. Okay? That is what it would do. How will it do? It is going to use what is known as secure private channel. So, secure private channel means no one can disrupt uh, whatever being sent there, no one can corrupt or change the values and so on. So, it is delivered, whatever is sent is delivered. We assume that this is uh, happening, right? That is why it is called the secure and private channel because others cannot know what the value is. Others, so if p i sends a value, if p i sends some value x to p j through a secure channel means this x cannot be altered okay? and this cannot be blocked and no other party will know what has been sent by p i to p j along this channel. Others have no access whatsoever. Okay? It is secure and private. So, all shares would be sent to other parties through secure private channels. So, we are going to assume a network in which parties are connected in a complete graph and by a secure private channel. Okay? This is another assumption. I will consolidate the assumptions. I will introduce as an sometimes we may would like, we would like to have a broadcast channel. That means a value can be simultaneously sent to all and all of them must receive the same one authenticated broadcast channel means it is guaranteed that if p1 tries to send a along that channel everyone will receive only a it's not that one gets a another gets a dash another get a double dash and so on it's not going to be like that so we have a guarantee that uh, we are not going to use that uh, broadcast channel here okay they may all be required in some other context at this point i am going to assume only point to point authenticated channels. So, P i is going to. So, what does it do? So, here is the notation. So, it has got V 1 1 and then P 2 has evaluated this for that is called uh, V 2, V 2 is first to share and uh, V 3 share 1 and V n 1. This is self generated, but this has come from P 2, this has come from P 3, this has come from P n. So, P n has used its polynomial evaluated at alpha 1, whatever the value it obtained, it passed it on to P 1 through such a private channel. Therefore, this value is now for example, is known only to P n and P 1. P n has generated, P 1 has received it and nobody else would know these values. Okay? Because these are all coming through the private channels. So, therefore, these values are all again private values right nobody else know because of the assumption that we have made here similarly p2 will have v1's uh, uh, share 2 v2's share 2 and so on vn's share 2 so what does it mean it means there is an nth polynomial by him this polynomial will be evaluated at alpha 2 and that value will be here so in general vj i is polynomial p j evaluated at alpha i. Remember this, this is the uh, p j is a hiding v j, p j is a random polynomial means all coefficients are random and it is evaluated at alpha i which is a fixed constant, system wide fixed constant 
and that defines this and uh, then uh, pj sends this to ith share therefore actually this is done by pj pj sending to pi pj will compute the ith share in this way after computing it it will send through a private secure channel to pi so that way all these people will have after stage 1 n shares okay each of them will have n shares at their disposal so what they are going to do is these values are known so all these will be linearly combined with this constant so a1 uh, v11 plus a2 v21 and so on so an vn1 so all these shares are going to be linearly combined in this way and you are going to obtain a value okay that i call it as v1 all right the reason why i am calling this as v1 is this is actually going to be a share of v with respect to 1 the reason is very simple if i have a mega polynomial p which is equal to alpha uh, no a1 p1 plus a2 p2 and so on a n p n if i evaluate this at alpha 1 i am getting a1 p1 at alpha 1 that is uh, v11 p2 at alpha 1 that is v21 and so on and a n p n at alpha 1 is uh, v n 1 and this is exactly what is calculated by him all these values are locally available here so through a local computation it can uh, carry out this so this will use a multiplication gate and this will use a multiplication gate and then this addition gate so while p1 is doing this p2 will also do with these values p3 will do this with these values it is a synchronous system so v1 will be generated here v of 1 will be generated here v of 2 will be generated here v of n will be generated here that is the shares of v will be generated but these shares are with respect to this mega polynomial remember that each one of them have got individually some polynomial but then that is combined with those appropriate constant and you get a big polynomial p and with respect to p these are the shares anyway it is a t degree polynomial based shares okay therefore again we have a guarantee that t of them can gang up but they are not going to discover v it is not possible for them to discover v but what is the guarantee that they will not be able to discover v1 or v2 or other values that is where the simulation paradigm uh, comes into uh, uh, comes to pay, play a big role okay i know that v cannot be computed but what about other values we will see that using the simulation paradigm we can give that kind of a guarantee okay we will come to that in a minute so what we have done is that a linear combination shares of a linear combination can be found out this can be obviously extended to a matrix okay so when you are extending that to a matrix it becomes the following okay so a matrix is a11 a12 etc a1 n a21 a22 a2 n etc a n1 a uh, n2 etc a n n and then now i have v1 to v n i have v1 to v n when you multiply get i get the vector v dash this is the vector v i get a vector v dash v1 dash v2 dash etc v n dash okay how do i get i i will give the shares of v1 v2 vn will i be able to obtain the shares of v1 dash v2 dash vn dash obviously it is possible that is because it is the first row is one linear combination second row is another linear combination like this you go linear combination after linear combination then you will be generating first the shares of v1 dash just i have shown the way in which shares of v is generated so shares of v1 dash can be generated by considering this linear combination shares of v2 dash can be computed by using this combination in this way by going through various uh, linear combinations i can get the shares of v1 dash v2 dash uh, vn dash etc available locally in other words any 
matrix vector multiplication and the resulting values can be obtained, resulting shares can be obtained and resulting values can also be obtained by putting t plus 1 or more shares. We will come to the construction later, but right now we are now seeing how the shares are traveling up in our circuit. So, I start with the circuit and then I start with the shares of the input, with that I keep building it up. So, it keeps building the shares of certain values, intermediate values, whatever is the circuit's intermediate values, those intermediate values the shares would be generated. Again by combining them you would be getting the shares and finally, you will end up with the shares. Only one more detail is uh, to be done, namely how do I handle the multiplication. Multiplication requires a 5 to 6 minutes of a careful discussion. So, I am going to see how the shares are handled for multiplication, okay, because you, uh, we will see what is involved in multiplication and then, uh, okay. Uh, <coughs> There is an important technique called the degree, degree reduction technique is to be uh, used, but then the degree reduction technique is also to be used with a, a small twist for our uh, requirement, formal requirement. So, I will first talk about what is the degree reduction and then what is that small twist that we require, that is how do we bring in randomness and so on with that and uh, that is going to uh, so, notice that the properties that we have are the following because all the polynomials are random polynomials, the mega polynomials are also uh, random okay? and they are all of degree t okay? because it is a some linear combination of uh, t and so on. But let us see the following, suppose A is uh, shared using polynomial P1, therefore the share of A1, share of A2 etc. share of a uh, n is with this. Suppose b is also shared, shares of b are available. So, b1, b2, b n. Now, it is a time to multiply, right? We have a multiplication gate. Multiplication gate has got two inputs. What are the inputs? By induction, they are the shares of some values. So, let us say share of a and share of a b has come for the current multiplication gate. So, all of them will locally do the multiplication. So, this will do the multiplication of these two 1 and it is going to get the share of a b 1. This is obvious because we if I have a polynomial a uh, with uh, a 1 x plus a t x power t and if I multiply with b plus b 1 x etcetera plus b t x power t if I multiply this, I get a polynomial a b plus something all are random x power 2 t. So, it is a 2 t degree polynomial, this is that mega polynomial p, p 1 and p 2. So, p is p 1 times p 2 and uh, p 0 is a b, therefore, p hides a b and p when you evaluate through alpha 1, alpha 2, etcetera, alpha n it is generating the shares, right. So, p of alpha 1 is this one, p of alpha 2 is this a b 2, a b 2, etcetera, a b n. So, with respect to this p, which is the product of these two, I have the shares of a b 1, a b 2 and a b n. So, with respect to a 2 t degree polynomial, now I have the shares, all right. I do not want 2 to be equal to n, okay. I want this to be less than n, 2 t cannot be equal to or more than n. So, the first condition that I am going to impose is uh, t is uh, less than n by 2, okay. And not only that, I do not want to have the shares of a 2 t degree polynomial. I would like to have only shares of a t degree polynomial and definitely not a 2 t degree polynomial. That is because if I have a 2 t degree polynomial share and if I further multiply with that, it will become 3 t degree polynomial and so on and the degree will keep increasing and then it will become meaninglessly large. That is the reason why I would like to always have a t degree polynomial based shares only. 
but when I multiply, I do get shares with respect to a polynomial, but that polynomial is a 2t degree polynomial. There is a beautiful reduction from 2t degree polynomial to t degree polynomial, okay? Uh, and then uh, that reduction uh, is a very clever reduction. It's, I, I would say that this is one of the uh, very clever moves. There is one more clever move done in this uh, protocol and both put together is uh, maintaining certain very interesting properties. Okay? We are going to see them uh, in successive details. First, I am going to discuss about the degree reduction. So, the, for the sake of uh, degree reduction, you look at the whole polynomial evaluation in this way and that gets you to a matrix called Vandermonde's matrix. Okay? So, you are evaluating P1 at several values. Okay? So, you are evaluating at alpha 1, alpha 2, etc., alpha n. Evaluating at alpha 1 means uh, uh, P of alpha 1 is uh, nothing but let us say it is A plus A1x plus a uh, t x power t uh, uh, x power t. <coughs> now, I am going to uh, first look at uh, the okay. Now, when you evaluate at uh, alpha 1 a plus a 1 alpha uh, plus uh, a 1 alpha 1 plus uh, a 2 uh, alpha square etc plus a t uh, alpha power t. So, all these uh, values, I, I, I have to get this value. I am going to get this value as the uh, sum of uh, the rows, I do not want to mess up with the uh, uh, symbols. So, I am following a particular article I will cite towards the end because after the discussion you can uh, easily follow up with the uh, material. I will quickly uh, go through that and uh, uh, finish the detail. So, uh, <coughs> we have 1 alpha 1 etc. alpha 1 power n minus 1, uh, 1 alpha 2 alpha 2 power n minus 1 and so on 1 alpha n alpha n power n minus 1, this matrix you multiply with, let us say this, I will call it as S, okay, S, A1, A2, etc., AT, rest of them are 0, okay, it is an, so you multiply this with this row, you get S, A1 alpha, A2 alpha square a 3 alpha 2, A t alpha t, rest of them are 0. Therefore, this gives you the shares of the polynomial. This gives you polynomial a share p at alpha 1, p at alpha 2, etc., p at alpha n. Therefore, from polynomial to shares, if you want to go pre multiply with this matrix, this matrix is called Vandermonde matrix, this is non singular for distinct alpha 1 to alpha n that are non-zero. This is a invertible matrix, inverse can al also as a beautiful math form and so on. We just know that uh, it is enough if you know that it is invertible. Therefore, if you want to go from uh, <coughs> polynomial to share, multiply by the Vandermonde's matrix. If you want to go from shares to polynomial, multiply by its inverse. Okay? Therefore, all you have to do is that uh, uh, poly to share multiply by uh, Vandermonde matrix, share to polynomial multiply by V inverse. If you pre-multiply by inverse, that is you take, suppose you have the shares. From these shares, if you pre-multiply by the inverse of the Vandermonde matrix, you are getting the uh, uh, polynomial. Okay? This is what we have to remember to see what is that we have to do. <coughs> now, what I am going to do is the following. Now, this space can be removed, uh, Vandermonde's matrix. <coughs> I have shares of a polynomial 
with respect to a 2t degree polynomial. I have a 2t degree polynomial, yes, a1x plus at x power t plus it goes on up to a 2t x power 2t, okay. So, this is called the p. I call a truncated polynomial p dash as s plus a 1 x plus a t x power t, x a t x power t. This is a truncated polynomial. This is a polynomial of degree t. It is the same polynomial truncated. Therefore, p dash 0 is also s p of. So, I have shares with respect to p. I want to generate shares with respect to p dash because p dash is a t degree polynomial. Given the shares of uh, the shares with respect to this, how do I arrive at the shares with respect to this? So, first I will do is that share to polynomial. If I have the shares, right, that is uh, uh, p of alpha 1, uh, p of alpha 1, p of alpha 2, etc. p of alpha n, I have the shares. From the shares to polynomial, there is a matrix, inverse of Van der Mons matrix, okay. So, when you do, what you get is the polynomial, yes, theoretically, yes, a1 up to a2 t 0. You are getting this theoretically, this one. Now, you multiply, you want only up to this t. Therefore, yes, it, only it has to survive this means you multiply by another matrix called the diagonal matrix, yet another matrix 1, 1, 1. It has got only t plus 1 once, rest of them are 0. So, when you are multiplying this, this will be multiplied by this matrix, which is going to result in a vector s, yes, a1, only up to a t, because this is only t plus 1, only t plus 1 terms will survive, all other thing will vanish. So, everything will vanish. Therefore, by pre-multiplying, theoretically, I am getting this vector. Again, now multiply by Van der Mans matrix, okay, you are going to get shares with respect to this polynomial. So, if you want to get a share with respect to any polynomial, you have to multiply by Van der Mans matrix. I am getting this polynomial. So, again, Therefore, all you have to do is you have the shares with respect to P, uh, you have to, uh, so you have n values which are representing the shares, you have to get n values which are shares with respect to P dash, they are linearly related. There is a matrix, that matrix is V, this matrix and V inverse, the product is a matrix. We have just now seen how to generate the shares of the uh, linear combination. Therefore, with the technique that we have already used, it is possible for you to generate the shares with respect to this. Therefore, we use that and uh, so you have a1, so ab1 uh, dash, etc. abn dash. That is, this is uh, modified using a linear transformation, but this is with respect to degree t, with respect to degree t, okay. So, uh, I, I have uh, already uh, come to an end, uh, I mean uh, the end of the time slot. Uh, so, let me make a couple of remarks which are uh, uh, fundamental and uh, basic in nature. Uh, the polynomial that we are requiring should be random polynomial. Since we require the random polynomial and the shares which are over here are not really with respect to a random polynomial. This is a polynomial that can be factored into two polynomials because it is a product of two polynomials, okay. So, they may have some special structures by easily factorizing and trying to find the root, etc. Probably some weakness could be exploited. Therefore, we do not want to take any chance for that. In other words, before the degree reduction, we would like to make sure that the polynomial involved is a random polynomial so that when I have a random polynomial, the truncated polynomial will be random because if all these coefficients are random, uh, then with respect to the truncated one, I will have a random. That way, with respect to the random polynomial only, I will have the shares being built and finally, with respect to some mega polynomial, random polynomial, I will have the shares of the uh, function value which I am 
looking for. So this is the evaluation. At no intermediate value, K people can gang up and get any information about whatever is the values that are shared and so on. So how do I convert a, a two degree polynomial which does not have randomness to a polynomial, two, d, two t degree polynomial that has randomness, but it should have the same value? The trick is very simple because shares are linearly additive. I will have a random 2t degree polynomial, random 2t degree polynomial sharing 0. Okay? I will have a random 2t degree polynomial sharing 0 and this share and that share when you add, you are going to have the shares whose value is again shares of AB, but now the new polynomial is a random polynomial. Okay? So, how do I identify one common polynomial which is a sharing acro 0 across all of them? Who will do that? Who will build the cat? Okay? There is no one need to build the cat. They can build the cat among themselves. So, what they do is again everybody will start with a 0 sharing polynomial okay? and then apply the linear one. And uh, so, P1 will start with a 2 degree polynomial with the constant term 0, you call it as Z1. So, P1 is using Z1 to share 0 using a 2 t degree polynomial. P2 will use another 2 t degree polynomial to that is called Z2. That way, each one of them will use a 2 t degree polynomial to share 0. When you add, you are going to get the shares of 0 with respect to the mega polynomial Z, which is equal to Z1 plus etc. Zn. Okay? This is of 2t degree polynomial, but this is a random. So, I have this share with respect to a polynomial p, I have 0 share with respect to z. When I add, I may get a polynomial h which is 2t degree and random. This is the most important uh, one. So, we need a small tweak of uh, generating among themselves by communicating a 0 value being shared. And uh, in fact, this uh, zero constant based polynomial is extremely useful and very clever deployment is needed in the simulation uh, uh, part as well. Okay? So, this is the trick. So, what is that we have seen so far? Given the shares of values which are given as an input to multiplication gate of degree t, the output will also be shares of the product of the values with respect to another uh, polynomial of degree t. Input are also with respect to random polynomial, output is also with respect to random polynomial. I know the time is uh, almost up. Yes, I, I, I understand. So, couple of just uh, uh, two minutes. I, huh? Okay, five minutes. Then uh, can you show the uh, slide? Then I will show one simulation at least. Uh, uh, so, actually I wanted to. Uh, okay. Uh, therefore, only shares can be manipulated and shares of the output can be obtained. That much is clear. Now, how do I guarantee that it is not leaking anything? The simulation paradigm is introduced in the context of uh, um, uh, semantic security and also in the context of uh, zero knowledge protocol design and their formal proofs by Goldwasser and others. So, the key idea is the following. Okay? Suppose I am able to do certain thing, whatever that is done by the protocol is done only with the local values, only with the local uh, inputs. In that case, it is said to have got no additional information. The intuition behind this is the following. In the zero knowledge protocol, for example, there is a prover and there is a verifier. There is a common value x for which p knows certain property. By interaction, they, it convinces the verifier that x has got that property. Okay? But how do, what is the guarantee that v has not obtained any other information related to it? Well, what we can do is that uh, we will consider the honest verifier protocol now. V has obtained a lot of values using this uh, interaction. We can do some arbitrary computation okay? and then try to obtain that value, but whatever that is being generated here, if that can be generated by another simulator m, which is uh, uh, m takes only this public value 
and if it uh, generates this, the implication is that P is not getting any other value, uh, any other information because whatever we could do can be done even without interaction because without this M is building the same piece of information without interaction. M has obtained all this information or something similar information to this without interacting with P. So, what, with whatever generated by M, nothing can be obtained because no interaction with uh, P at all. It has been simply generated only using X. Therefore, whatever information we can obtain from this is all he can obtain even in this interaction. M has not even interacted with P, so it has obviously no clue whatsoever about it. Hence, V also is not going to get. The simple example and very convincing example that is given in uh, uh, Goldreich uh, book is the following. Let us suppose that there is a graph and uh, after interaction uh, uh, you are the prover has proved that the graph is Eulerian. This is not going to give the verifier any new information because he can do himself given the graph he can do the computer. The simulator is nothing but the algorithm which is working on the input x and then finding whether it is. So, without even interaction it is uh, possible for you to get that uh, information. Okay? Uh, but if the graph is Hamiltonian, he will not be able to do himself because he has only a polynomial time and polynomial time it is not, now he gets some, gained some information and so on. Therefore, the whole point is without interaction, only with the value with them, if they could generate whatever the actual protocol has generated, then it has not gained any information about any other uh, private values. So, these uh, T people will gang up and only with their values whether it has it is capable of generating everything that it has received in an actual protocol. So, in actual protocol the uh, adversary has got actual protocol lot of information. Now, there is a simulator which is going to take only the inputs and outputs of the uh, bad process and see whether it can generate this. It can either generate this or it can generate something equivalent to that. That is uh, the distribu statistical distribution being um, uh, identical etc. comes into picture there. So, uh, with only input whether you are able to generate uh, uh, something similar to it, identical to it is what is important. So, that is uh, possible here. Uh, if you imagine in for example, in our linear uh, matrix uh, protocol in one minute I can give the outline of a proof. Uh, if T people uh, gang up, they have the T shares okay? and if they also um, put the output value uh, right, then they have a T, uh, T plus 1 value because output is nothing but the value which is evaluated at uh, 0. Therefore, several of the individual uh, things which they have actually received from the honest parties. Honest parties might be uh, using some polynomial that is not even known uh, by the uh, bad elements that is the adversary may not know what polynomial is used to generate the share, but those shares can be physically generated by explicitly finding out an exact value of the formula and then putting the uh, values and so on. Okay? This is for T and it is less there are some random padding to be done etc. Uh, so, uh, it is uh, possible for you to uh, generate all the information that is obtained by in the actual execution by only looking at the input and output of that. Therefore, if you look at the formal definition this of the simulation paradigm, simulator is nothing but a polynomial time algorithm which is going to take only the restricted input and output of input that are available to the adversary that is through the bad processors or bad parties and using that it will generate something equivalent to whatever that is done in the actual protocol. And uh, that passage is what is to be shown because of uh, lack of time I am uh, 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 stopping at this point. I hope I have given little bit of uh, uh, information uh, towards this. In my hearts of hearts, I would like to, uh, I would have liked to expand on the simulation part of it, but uh, uh, I quite did not watch the way in which I was uh, progressing and uh, I took more time in explaining the. Uh, anyway, Shamir's secret sharing is such a wonderful uh, secret sharing mechanism that has got lot of interesting properties. 
the paper which appeared in uh, I will give you ePrint Archive 2011, uh, 2011 bar, oh, wait, what is that, uh, one second, Where, what is that refer, 136, 2011 bar 136, this is the excellent paper on the complete 89 page description giving all the details of everything related to BGW protocol, okay, for the static case and uh, dynamic case and uh, variety of adversaries and uh, um, secret sharing, verifiable secret sharing, everything is explained in detail and proofs are built combinatorially. So, first time reader who are aware of only discrete math will be able to follow the arguments and the subtleties involved in this. I suggest you go through this uh, 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 report. This is a current updated version, 2018 this is updated and that has got complete details. I, I stop at this point. Thank you very much. So thank you for the uh, high school style uh, comprehensive <laughs> exposition of B BGW. I hope you all enjoyed. We have uh, time for a quick question. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Professor, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, you were talking about alpha 1, alpha 2 and these values. Yeah. Uh, how exactly are these calculated? Could you just briefly uh, explain? Uh, how exactly? Are these like uh, derived and shared across all the parties? Uh, no, this is a common uh, uh, information. The, you can, this is, the, the, this can be considered as a pre-processing setup. In fact, the circuit is also, one copy of the circuit is also available with all of them so that in a synchronous way they evaluate gate by gate. Therefore, this alpha 1 to alpha n as well as the circuits are assumed to be available with all the parties. I see. Thank yeah. you so much. That is a pre-processing uh, stage you can say. Any other question? Quick, quick one. Uh, so, uh, regarding the polynomials which are chosen by the parties to distribute the shares, uh, are there uh, certain polynomials which should be explicitly avoided? Uh, no, we are working with uh, random polynomials, right? Therefore, uh, and the field is a very large field, the size of the uh, space from which we are pulling out the random polynomial is f power t, f itself is a huge number. And that power t is again unimaginably large number from which you are taking a random element. Maybe there are some very nasty polynomial like x plus x square plus x cube plus x3, such a very simple polynomial and it may, but it is the probability that you will get such a bad polynomial is uh, rare. And all arguments are probabilistic, therefore uh, always there is a probability that you will end up uh, suffering from some combination, but as long as that probability is negligibly small. Uh, we are willing to live with that. All will come in the probabilistic arguments. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so with this, we'll, uh, we are going to conclude the past session and uh, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, there's a small yeah. oh, oh, okay, of okay. Yes, yes. on behalf of the organizer. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah.